So Tesla reported their Q3 2024 numbers yesterday night and it looks pretty promising. And on the other hand, Rivian is really struggling this year and we're going to be breaking down everything that you need to know. But before doing that, a quick reminder that all the best tools for day trading and investing will be linked in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get right in. So first, let's look at the earnings results. So Tesla Q3 adjusted EBITDA 4.6 versus 3.9 estimated. Q3 EPS 0.62. Q3 adjusted net income 2.5 billion versus estimated 2 billion. And Tesla Q3 free cash flow 2.74 billion. So just quickly looking at these numbers, the first thing I realized is that Tesla is still growing very fast compared to what analysts are saying. This is a graph over here, which seems pretty complicated, but we're going to be breaking it down. It's what analysts are saying versus the price action. Right now, we can see right over here, so bottom left, that the mean is 213.16. So this is what they're saying that the price should be of Tesla. And this was mainly done before the earnings. So now let's break down this graph because it can seem complicated, but it is quite simple. So recommendation mean. So we have over here on the right strong sell. So that means if the analysts think it's you should sell the stock or a strong buy, which means sometimes that they see a lot of growth opportunity, it's going to be a strong buy. Now we see that the average of the mean is 2.79. So three is a hold, two is a buy. So we're just like above the hold. So sometimes it's a buy, sometimes it's a hold. So they're pretty much saying that the price that is currently trading in the market is just whatever price should be. And then we have target price, which is going to be the one that's over here. So what is the price target versus the price? So generally speaking, the price tends to reflect what the analysts are saying, except if there's one clown that just said that this stock should be $5,000 but when we take the average of the price, this is what is represented by this line over here. So right now, the current analyst medium, as I said, is 213. If we look at this chart, the price is 256. This means a couple of things. It means that Tesla is just performing way better than what the analysts and what funds are saying. So my take from experience is just that over here, funds were saying that I don't think the numbers are going to be good for the next quarter earnings. So we should wind out our position. And what I'm happening is that the reaction is opposite. Tesla is outperforming and we can see it by all these numbers. So let's bring it back to Tesla's earnings. So Tesla recognized her second highest quarter of regulatory credit revenue. And this is wild. Tesla is worth so much money and such a big amount of their income is still coming from government credit, which is mind boggling. Also expect to achieve slight growth in vehicle delivery in 2024. Energy storage deployment expect to be more than double year over year. Tesla Cybertruck production increase sequentially and achieve a positive gross margin for the first time. This is even more wild. Um, I really thought the Cybertruck and not only me, I think pretty much everyone was just going to be a money pit uh, where they just burn so much cash thinking that it's going to be cool and never really catch on. It's actually the opposite. People seem to love it, even if the price over time has decreased. And the reason why is that over time, people were just adding herself to the wait list. And now when they finally got that car, they were just selling it right away for a premium because a rapper, celebrity all wanted it. And now it's actually people are able to get it at market value. This makes a difference in terms of what is the price now versus what it was when it came out because it was mostly reselling. Already there within like a few years, they're even able to break even um, on the gross margin of this car. It's kind of mind boggling once again. So now let's bring it to the fun part. So Tesla's revenue, we can see over time that it grew a lot. Like they're making a ton of cash with all these vertical that we spoke about. And over time, revenue is really increasing. Something that was a bit special is that their EBITDA is actually uh, taking a hit this year. So that means that their cost overall has been also increasing significantly. And I think that was also part of their factory and also putting this car out. So the Cybertruck, um, it really slowed their production, increased their cost because it was a new car and it really screwed up with that number. But overall, we can see that this quarter it increased significantly. And when we go back over here, we just look at the revenue. So revenue growth is pretty much steady up, not perfectly, but overall it's steady. Then when we look at the comparison, which is Rivian, it's not equal, right? Rivian is, is a newer car, but 
something is odd. So we see over here that Q2 2021, there was no revenue. Totally fine, the car wasn't out, it wasn't ready, so they weren't selling yet. Now what we see is that they started to make money. There was demand for the car, you know, the first buyer, the people that are really enthusiastic about this. Now it seemed like it peaked in September 2023, so like a year ago, and it's downhill from there. Like, this is worrying, to say the least, because they don't have a lot of money. And when it's a new product, especially like a new electric car, it should have a decent amount of demand. People should be like excited about your car when a new car comes out or a new product comes out. There's like a, a high demand normally for this car, but it just seemed like the revenue is like, it's just not increasing. The demand is just not there and they're projecting to be even lower. And even if we look at like Q2 2026, it's projected to be like very, very small, but that's not all. So the big deal comes really from the cash and equivalent. So this is how much they have cash to run their business. And we can see that this is like a steady decline. Like they're really burning a lot, a lot, a lot of cash. And this is um, 5.7 uh, billion. So we have to compare this to how much is their burn rate. So how much is the operating cost? And this is where it gets troubling. We can see that every quarter they burn about 2.6 billion. So if you quickly do the math and don't worry, I know that's not exactly how you do it, but they have about six, seven months of cash, give or take uh, two quarters. And that means that they still need to raise more capital. What was like different about Rivian is that they had such a high backers, right? They have Volkswagen, they have Amazon, which was one of their main one, but the price over time is just not reflecting um, a company that has a lot of people trust in them. And this is really, really getting bad because if you go back over here, you look at Rivian and you're a fund that may be willing to, you know, give them money in terms of debt, um, to raise some capital, like diluting the stock, like typically just selling additional shares. You see that their revenue is declining and their burn rate is really high. So how much money can they actually raise that is going to impact how long this company can really last? Considering that it's just so expensive to run a manufacturer. So what I'm really thinking here is that Rivian is either going to go kind of bankrupt over the long run like a Fisker and trade maybe OTC or it could really be a potential acquisition for some other big company that has like more money than them and just already more established kind of brand and be like a real partnership like they own like 50 or 70 percent of that company or just buying it outright that's my take hopefully enjoy peace